I'm looking at the August 2015 Watchtower on my little iPad here, and the article entitled, Keep an Expectation, based upon the prophecy of Habakkuk. Well, as many as you no doubt know, I've been online for uh, over a decade, really, and my main uh, focus has been to repudiate the Watchtower's uh, 1914 doctrine and everything that's been attached to it. Uh, for example, the the teaching that the conclusion of the system began in, in 1914, that the harvest began, that Jehovah's Witnesses are living in the foretold spiritual paradise, speaking the pure language of truth, so on and so on. Uh, but uh, there's no getting through to the leadership of the Watchtower, because they are committed to uh, 1914. And there's a number of reasons for that, which I won't go into now, but uh, has something to do with a man of lawlessness. And as Paul said, this man of lawlessness will promote a fake parousia. If you read uh, Second um, Thessalonians, the second chapter, that was the uh, subject that Paul was talking about when he led into uh, this man of lawlessness. He warned the brothers, you know, not to be quickly shaken from your reason as to this verbal message or an inspired statement uh, as though from us, our written message. It's interesting. Um, I was reading and... Um, online, one of Russell's old publications, The Time is at Hand. And I think the, the preface on it was written posthumously, but it was saying that, you know, there had been no one who had, who had done more for the truth of Christianity than the Apostle Paul. But it said right up there with him, when it's all said and done, Pastor Russell's going to be <laughs> recognized as one of the foremost. And it's interesting, I mean, there are placing him alongside the Apostle Paul in his writings. And interestingly, the, the Watchtower has been preaching a presence of Christ from the very beginning. It used to be, well, even this, this article here is not really being honest when it, it says, uh, I don't know if I can find it now, but when they recognized that Christ's presence began in 1914, they immediately began preaching. And that, that is so untrue. And a lot of old-time Jehovah's Witnesses know that is not true because from the beginning, the Watchtower taught the presence began in 1874. Armageddon was supposed to come shortly after 1914. And they continued to believe that 1874 was the beginning of the presence of Christ up until World War II. So <laughs> they, they make it up as they go along as far as keeping this uh, parousia thing intact. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. The time is at hand. And that's, that's what Jesus said when his apostles said, what, what will be, ask him, you know, what will be the sign of your presence? And he said, many will come on the basis of my name and they will say the due time is approached. This would precede Christ's presence. And that's what the Watchtower has been doing, announcing that the presence is, is here, that the day of Jehovah is here. For decades, the Watchtower said the day of Jehovah began in 1914. And then slowly they've retracted all those things without ever really <laughs> retracting them. They'd, anyway, um, I like to read you couple of paragraphs here. It says, although keeping an expectation was appropriate for Christians living centuries ago, it is particularly important for us. Why? This is paragraph five, by the way. Because we are living during Christ's presence. The sign of his presence has been in evidence since 1914. And the multi-featured sign, which includes worsening world conditions and the global preaching, means that we are living in the conclusion of the system of things. I could write a book on unravel. In fact, I have written a book on this, but <laughs> have we seen all the signs, all, all the features of this um, multi-featured sign? 
No, we haven't. According to the Watchtower, we haven't. Here they say we have, though. Elsewhere they say we haven't seen it. For example, Jesus, part of this multi-featured sign, Jesus said, men will become faint out of fear and expectation of the things coming upon the world. For decades, the Watchtower said, yes, look, you know, the Cold War, people were fearful of a nuclear holocaust, people were fearful of crime. Well, a few years ago, they said, no, this, this feature of the sign of Christ's presence has not developed yet. So they're not being honest. It's what uh, it says in Ezekiel, that when Jehovah's judgments come, he said there will be no more double-faced divination. Divination was a way of divining the future. And the watchtower divines the future by means of the prophecies. And they can interpret the prophecies any way they want to manipulate how we think. And when they interpret a prophecy in two different ways, that is double-faced divination. So on the one hand, we've seen all of these things of this multifaceted sign, and then elsewhere, no, we haven't. <laughs> so, but Jehovah's Witnesses obviously uh, are not aware of these things. They just go to the Watchtower study and they, they see what they're saying here, and so that's the truth. Uh, any, any rate, um, my, my whole focus has been a future presence of Christ. Take this uh, other point here that says we're living in the conclusion of the system of things. That began in 1914 too. Well, go to the 13th Matt chapter of Matthew. Excuse me, I'm trying to talk fast before my iPad goes out. I've only got 8% uh, left on it. Anyway, um, Jesus said in the 13th chapter of Matthew that the harvest is a conclusion of a system of things. And he said that the master of the harvest will command his angels and they will go out and they will collect out from his kingdom all persons doing lawlessness and all things causing stumbling. So let the watchtower explain how that has been fulfilled. In that context, obviously, the kingdom is Christ's congregation. The angels wouldn't collect lawless persons out of Christendom, would they? How had the stumbling blocks been removed from Christ's kingdom? Are there stumbling blocks within the Watchtower Society? Within the Christian congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses? Of course there are. How many of Jehovah's Witnesses were stumbled over 1975, for example? How many have been stumbled when they found out the Watchtower had carried on a secret partnership with the United Nations for 10 years? Lots were stumbled. The Watchtower has denied it, but that doesn't matter. Many were stumbled, and many will be stumbled when this whole parousia thing comes unraveled. As Jesus foretold, many will be stumbled. Have we seen that aspect of the multi-featured sign yet? No. Another example is that Jesus said that uh, you will be led before governors and kings to give them a witness. Has that happened? How many of Jehovah's Witnesses have stood before governors and kings or presidents? He said that children will have their parents put to death, vice versa. How many uh, of Jehovah's Witnesses have been put to death. None that I know of in the United States. Some in, obviously, Nazi Germany, but that, that was quite a while ago. Before my iPad runs out, <laughs> um, I'd like to read to you. A few weeks ago, I uh, published a so-called Kingdom Bulletin newsletter, Kingdom Bulletin number nine, and I sent it to every member of the governing body via email and some 50 brothers at Bethel. And uh, the thrust of the Kingdom Bulletin was commenting on July 2015 uh, Watchtower article in which 
The Watchtower said soon, very soon, we can expect the UN to turn upon false religion and destroy it. And so I was presenting to the brothers, asking for proof. We know the Bible says that the wild beast will turn upon Babylon, but when they say soon, very soon, this will happen, why do they say that? And I presented the instance, if one of Jehovah's Witnesses were to tell someone else this and they asked for proof, what would you say? Could you point to anything that the UN is doing that would indicate that it is preparing to destroy organized religion around the world? And of course, there isn't anything. The Watchtower didn't bother to present anything. But here, it's, it seems that uh, I pressed a, a nerve. And I know these articles are prepared uh, some months or weeks in advance, but they also have uh, uh, editorial power and they can make changes because it seems very coincidental that they address this very point. Uh, try to, anyway. It says, events on the world scene, this paragraph 17, clearly indicate that Bible prophecy is now being fulfilled. They don't say what that is, but World War I was <laughs> hundred years ago. But Jesus said, when you see all of these things, and no one has seen all of these things, have you seen World War I, World War II? I doubt it, unless you're over a hundred years old. Does reading about it in a watchtower constitute seeing this sign of Christ? You have to be told that somebody saw it a hundred years ago? It doesn't make any sense. Therefore, we should not assume that much time is needed for the state of this world to develop to the point, get this, where the ten horns and the wild beast of Revelation 17, 16 turn on Babylon the Great, the world empire of false religion. Let us bear in mind that God will put it into their hearts to make that move. And this, will, and this could happen swiftly at any time. <laughs> okay, so I, I pose the question, should we say it, this is going to happen because the Watchtower says so? Well, the Watchtower says yes, because we say so. We know that God can put it into their hearts, and, but the fact is it, it comes after the beast comes from the abyss. And the Watchtower has totally mutilated this, this prophecy because, well, for one thing, they say there's two different beasts and they both come from two different abysses at two separate times. And not only that, the two horned beast out of the earth doesn't arise from the abyss. It's crawling out of the earth as just comes from the stable part of, uh, Mankind, whatever that means. But in that kingdom bulletin, I pointed out the uh, fallacy of believing that the Anglo-American duo suffered a fatal head wound during the First World War. Um, it couldn't be. The United States and Britain were on the victorious side of that war. The fatal head wound is imminent. It will mean the collapse of this present political economic system. And from the grave, from the ashes of that collapse, will come this eighth king. And that's how we'll know then that the conclusion has begun. And the beast will then go off. The, sa the same article mentions we don't know how long the time of the end will be. Well, that's not true. We do know how long it will be, approximately 1,260 days, three and a half years, 42 months, a time, time, and half a time, right? But the Watchtower has mutilated all of that, rendered it meaningless by applying it to non-events during the First World War. But again, pointing to the future, the time of the end will commence, and it could commence suddenly, I expect it to, but it will not be the Great Tribulation as the Watchtower. In this same article, and they quote 
Jesus about staying on the watch. If he comes in the first watch or the second watch of the night, if he appears to be delaying, keep on the watch. Is he coming to destroy Babylon the Great? No. Jesus told us to stay on the watch for his coming and his being present. He's coming as a thief in the night. His parousia will begin when Jesus comes as a thief in the night. He mentioned that in connection with the judging of the slaves of his household. Not Babylon the Great. The master of the house is coming at an hour they do not think to be it. In the 12th chapter of Luke, Jesus made that very clear. He said, those that are awake, he said, I will come alongside them and minister to them and make them recline at the table. So his coming alongside them in a special way is his presence. That's what presence means, to come alongside. But his coming alongside them is coming at an hour they do not think likely. He's coming as a thief in the night to commence his presence. So the watchtower, you know, I'm sure they're going to keep <laughs> hammering away at this, but uh, events are going to overtake them. And in the end, they, they will have to uh, reconcile the fact that they have committed a fraud, really. Jehovah's Witnesses will have to reconcile that fact. And uh, for some, that will be too much. Uh, but for those that surmount that final stumbling block, then a, a new era will open up during the presence. Thanks for watching. <laughs>